It's that time of year again. Today, we're dropping the all new Galaxy S24 Ultra and comparing it side by side next to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, this year, Samsung made a few changes that actually might help it in the context of a drop. For one, the S24 Ultra is using Corning's new Gorilla Glass armor on both the front and the back of the phone. Two, they're using titanium instead of aluminum. And three, Samsung finally dished the curved display in favor of a flat one, which may allow that titanium frame to absorb at least some of the impact. Of course, the iPhone's edges are also flat, it also is using titanium, and it has the advantage of being a little bit lighter. Now, whether or not that'll be enough to get the iPhone another win over the S24 Ultra, well, there's only one way to find out. Round number one. Backdrop. Three, two, one. After that backdrop, the phones still remain fully functional, but oh man, both of them completely shatter on the back. I was really hoping that the new Gorilla armor on the Galaxy S24 Ultra would make a difference this year, but the glass actually looks worse on the Galaxy than it does on the iPhone, with the spider webbing going all over the place. That's not to say that the iPhone's glass looks good or anything, it's still shattered in, not a result you would ever want on your phone, but with the Galaxy's cameras also getting more chewed up than the iPhone's, it's a clear win for the iPhone in round number one. Round number two. Corner drop. Two, one. After being dropped straight onto their corners, the phones come away without sustaining too much damage to their titanium frames. The iPhone's frame did make a little spark right as it hit the concrete, which would make you think that it took more damage, but it actually looks really good. The scuffs are barely noticeable even under this direct light. And it's pretty much the same story with the Galaxy. Despite having that sharp corner kind of dig into the concrete, the new titanium frame held up really well, better than I think we've ever seen a Galaxy phone do in the corner drop before. The S Pen did pop out during the impact, but it pops right back in no problem, with both phones still remaining fully functional. However, the iPhone's rear glass is starting to fall apart. You can see that chunk of glass missing right there at that impact corner. So while the iPhone's frame looks better, I'm gonna have to call it a tie in round number two. Round number three, face drop. Three, two, one. All right, time for the moment of truth. And oh, whether you call it Gorilla Armor or Ceramic Shield, the glass on both phones shatter. I thought maybe we'd get a different result, especially on the Galaxy, since this is the first year that Samsung went with a flat edge instead of a curved edge. And you know, that curve was always the weak point, but clearly it didn't matter here with spider webbing all over the place. In fact, it went up there to the selfie area, causing the camera to have glare issues, ruining pretty much any selfie that you would take. But even worse, the cracks also went through the area on the fingerprint scanner, causing it to fail as well. On the bright side though, the screen is still technically fully functional, at least in response to the touch, with even the S Pen still working despite the bumpy terrain. The iPhone, on the other hand, while it doesn't look pretty, there is less spider webbing overall, with Face ID and the selfie camera remaining fully functional, giving the iPhone the clear win in round number three. Bonus round. All right, so with both phones still operational, we move on to the bonus round, where due to popular demand, we're bringing back the 10 drop format, dropping each phone onto steel up to 10 times to test their impact and shock resistance. And three, two, one. So one bonus drop in, and initially both phones look pretty much the same as before. Maybe a bit more spider webbing across the glass with a repeated impact, but nothing major to report on. Now, because we only did one bonus drop last time, this is the point where we stopped testing the iPhone a few months ago. But with us now deciding to do more bonus drops this time around, we turned this iPhone back on and discovered something interesting, 
in that the display now has this little blacked out area in the corner, which wasn't there before, which is kind of strange since we didn't touch the phone at all during this time. So it's something that we'll have to keep an eye on as we do the new drops. Oh man, so after the second bonus drop, the iPhone's display takes another hit with this pink vertical line going up its screen. The damage in the corner still remains the same, but so far it's not looking good for the iPhone, while the Galaxy on the other hand is still going strong, so we'll keep on going. At the halfway point here, both phones look terrible, but there's nothing really new to report on with them both remaining operational. Okay, so we definitely saw something happen there with the iPhone, with the screen just going completely white. We can't even turn the display off even when we're pressing the power button, and obviously everything remains unresponsive to the touch. You can actually see it happen in the reflection in this slow-mo clip, with the white screen starting at the top and then trickling down to the bottom. It's pretty crazy, but either way, the iPhone is no longer operational, so we're gonna stop dropping it since it technically failed. However, the Galaxy does seem to be working just fine. So for that phone, we're gonna keep on going. Oh no, just one drop later, the Galaxy suffers its own set of problems. There's now damage to the actual panel with this white strip going across the bottom of the screen and a bunch of these yellow strips going across the rest of the display. Now, it's not as bad as it is on the iPhone since the phone still is responding to the touch and the acid test is it can still make an emergency call. So despite the damage, we're gonna keep on going. 10 brutal bonus drops in. While the phone looks terrible, the Galaxy still technically works. Like it doesn't work well, but it is still operational, which is something we can't really say about the iPhone. The iPhone is still just stuck on that white screen, although it did flicker back for a second, revealing a bunch of new vertical lines going up its display, but then it went right back to that white screen with it being stuck there no matter what we do. We even tried forcing a restart, but it didn't seem to help at all, making it a clear win for the Galaxy in round number four. So with all four rounds in the books, it's time to take a look at the scorecard. We're still gonna be looking at each round independently since nobody really drops their phones repeatedly like this, but in the backdrop, the iPhone shattered and scuffed less overall. In the corner drop, the mixed result led to a tie. In the face drop, the iPhone remained fully functional while the Galaxy's fingerprint scanner failed. And then in the bonus round, the iPhone failed completely, which makes this a close one, but overall, it's a win for the Galaxy in this drop test. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.